Hi, YouTube audience. It's been a long time since I've really had time to make a video. I still don't have much time if I want to get sleep. I work uh, morning, afternoon shifts and night shifts. My kids come with me to work a lot of the time. Um, so I, yeah, and I have like a one and a half hour break in between, so. Um, I don't, I just, I'm so tempted to just call the police department again. I know it wouldn't do anything, but the police department where Caitlin lived and ask them how they are okay knowing what they know about Caitlin's story, assuming they know anything. I mean, maybe that's giving them too much credit. And I'm not like a police hater or anything like that, but in, in her case, or lack thereof, there never really was a real case that was that was followed through with at all. I w I'm so tempted to just call the police department and, and outright ask them, how are y'all okay allowing the siblings of Caitlin Nicole Davis to go back with this man who did horrific things, not just on account of Caitlin, but her cousins as well. They also um, testified to the same abuse from him sexual abuse so just how how are they okay with throwing kids around in these negligent dirty dysfunctional i mean dysfunctional is an understatement here it is 2022 20, now because today's january 1st and nothing 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 when it comes to caitlin we really have to it, it shows that we and by we i mean you know each other's neighbors like to strangers we have to look out for one another because caitlin couldn't rely even on the police on the school system on her psychiatrist on CPS had there just been a stranger like whoever you watching this video myself everyone else who who met Caitlin and other kids like her and want to help her we need each other because we can't always rely on the people who are supposed to help or who is who are supposed to care and something else to really find a friend who can relate to you when it comes to you feeling depressed. And I don't just mean sad. I mean, if you feel suicidal, if you have tantrums and you just explode and you don't know why, and you just, you need to find, and you will, you will one day find a person like this, because I have. You need to find someone who can relate because most people, most adults, if they cannot relate, they just think that you're choosing to feel that way. It doesn't matter, even if they try to understand, it will be very difficult for them. Even some uh, counselors and psychiatrists can't understand unless they can relate, they just don't understand. And then you're only gonna feel worse. When you are vulnerable, you reach out for help or you show that side of you, they're not gonna understand it. And so they're gonna feel this sense of defeat or um, it's gonna feel like a challenge for them um, or it might just scare them. And that's not gonna help you. So I really suggest remembering for one, remembering that they're not, e not everyone is equipped. If they cannot relate to how you feel when it comes to feeling suicidal, then a person's not really equipped to even have the tools to, to help you. So if you keep that in mind, that helps, that'll remind you that it's not your, it's not like they, it's not a personal thing. They, they literally cannot help you or and or find a friend who can relate to you even though yes it's you know y'all are both going to be drowning together instead of someone throwing you a life jacket at least you're not alone and that person will understand you everyone deserves someone they that who can understand them because indifference is what can be killer and and um a man named rod starkey from the caitlin community he mentioned one time how indifference is what pretty much was in Caitlin's family. Everyone was indifferent to her. 
And that's almost worse than being hated because there's no connection and human connection is what makes us feel alive and worthy and valuable. Someone left a comment too. Um, I'm not sure who it was. I think it was a German guy who was in the community whose name starts with a B. I could be wrong. Um, it was a very well written, very, sorry, very well written comment on one of my videos. And this was recent. And he, it was something along the lines of, we usually see ourselves in the eyes of others. A lot of us, some of us have this innate confidence, but for the most part, most of us see ourselves how others see us. And, you know, look at Caitlin's mirrors. The only mirrors she had, it was Anthony Rogers and her mother who was like not even all there. And I mean, yes, her younger siblings adored her, but they weren't, you know, her guide in life. They were not, you know, they looked up to her. And Caitlin's mirrors were faulty. They were messed up. They were not mirroring back the accurate person Caitlin was. So she was looking in the, in a, a lie of a mirror. Like that comment that that person left was amazing. I wish I could go and find it right now, but I'm in my vehicle. Um, just got off work and I'm in my vehicle and, um, but yeah. I really miss everybody. I really enjoy the comments. It's really interesting because I get some comments that say, um, like they agree that the system is hard on dads, like in Matt Davis's case, like they can understand that. Then I have other comments of people saying like how horrible this man's just making excuses to have not seen his daughter. I recently had a lady leave a comment saying that even for women, the system can be difficult because she's going through that right now. Um, and then John Crimes put out a video I watched yesterday on my break and wow, it just brought everything back full force because in the middle of the video, I think it was like the 45 minute mark or something, it's Caitlin's voice when she's crying and saying she's sorry. You know, something that tends to fuel feeling suicidal is this you just replay in your mind all the evil things people have told you and it's almost like you you feel like you have to believe it you feel like you have to believe it and it will cause sorrow it will make you feel like you owe an apology when you feel that way do the opposite try your hardest to think of the nice things people have said to you try to counteract all the evil people have said and yeah, it's snowing right now. I live in, I live in Arkansas now and um, I moved here last year and it's funny because they never get snow where I am. And now we, <laughs> then it's like the snow followed me. You know, I still think about how Caitlin's psychiatrist, he, you know, he had a monetary incentive to give her the Prozac. It even said with the bottle, with the pill bottle, that she needed to be monitored. And this was for an adult. This wasn't even for a 12-year-old. So, unbelievable. Unbelievable. He went on a vacation, too, right after she ended her life. Her psychiatrist did. Went on a vacation with that monetary, you know, they get, a, they get bonuses and stuff. Um, I, I hope I worded it correctly. Her psychiatrist has monetary incentives, aside from his usual pay, when they, uh, for every prescription they write, they have a certain bonus they get for vacations and things like that. And this is here in the States, that's how it works. And just disgusting. Disgusting. No one has even spoken out. I don't mean in her family, I mean, like, no one who worked at her, like, I'm a part of some Facebook groups, like, for Rome, Georgia, and things like that, and the things that they get all, I just don't understand, I don't, how, I, I will, it will always amaze me how people who've learned about Caitlyn, and they've seen her in videos, haven't been captivated, haven't been touched to a point where they want to 
see if anything, if anyone was ever held accountable. You know, if mainstream media jumped on this case, I have no doubt in my mind that let's say this was on like Fox News or CNN or some major YouTube channel like um, the Young Turks or something or Joe Rogan. Let's say Joe Rogan was talking right now and he was like, yeah, y'all hear about this uh, little girl, beautiful little girl. Yeah, mm -hmm, big blue eyes, very smart too. I forgot, you know, she was 12. Listen, you know, I imagine that's how Joe Rogan would talk about her. I guarantee you, suddenly, those police would be a, have a kick in the butt to finally see, you know, hold everyone accountable. But this is like, her case is a reflection of what I see all the time with kids in, in situations where parents shouldn't have, have been parents. I'm sorry. I just, don't, why is it so easy to just have kids? Caitlin was precious. She was precious. Many other kids like her are precious. And they don't even know it. And not just that, but they hate themselves. They hate themselves. And then social media is like another layer to the self-hatred because I'm in my 30s, okay? And I'm not in school. I'm not in this like competitive dynamic, you know? At work, it's different than school. And even myself, when in my 30s, when I'm sitting there scrolling through like Facebook or Instagram or whatever, I find myself like devolving emotionally into this like mindset of, oh no, I've got to look this way. I'm a loser. Look how successful this person is. I can't even imagine how that would feel at Caitlin's age while living in a trailer, neglected, playing mom to your siblings, having no personal space at all, have, not being able to, you know, explore your creative side like she was a singer she probably could, was an artist who who knows really all of caitlin's talents but she had no tools to be able to really make them grow she had no foundation to grow on she had all these gifts and nowhere to put them right um if y'all want me to go live, let me know. I'll have to do it. it it's going to have to be late, though. It's going to have to be, like, close to midnight uh, central time. Or really early in the morning. Um, but, you know, people, people say, why haven't you spoken out? Why haven't you talked about her? Well, I constantly am checking up on Anthony constantly checking up on the siblings as far as here where I am here when it comes to Caitlin I feel how do I word it just I was gonna say hopeless but I mean, I don't want to be negative. It's, I feel like right now, if the clouds opened up and Caitlin could speak to us, she would make it very clear that she would want her, she would want Abby and AJ to be safe and happy. And she'd probably say the same about her mom and her dad too. I, I really don't know what she'd say about her parents, but I, without a doubt, know she would want that for Abby and AJ. And guess what? That's not the case. Presumably so. I don't see how they would be happy and healthy when they're in the same environment that resulted in Caitlin wanting to die. It, it, on top of malnourishment. And just, yeah. So it's hard to talk about something when you feel like there's been absolutely no progress and nothing's changed. That's the thing. Not for the... Mm, I can't, I don't know if I can say for the worse because I'm not in Abby and AJ's life. I don't know the extent of Anthony's engagement. I know he's not with them 24 seven, but I know that he is with them sometimes. And I know that 
he has titles like dad that he does not deserve. I know that he is still, you know, going around being sexual with people. Sloppily so to where he can procreate. I just, uh, yeah, so I just get really angry. I just get angry when I talk about it lately. And yeah, but I'm really proud of everybody who learns about her and is touched by her. And I'm proud of everyone who sticks together and forgives each other and realizes you've made mistakes, you're not perfect, and therefore is that open to accepting people, accepting people. And that's how Caitlin was. Caitlin had felt betrayed before by her friend. Her friend called her a name behind her back. She was accused of certain things. Um, and she forgave her, publicly forgave her. She didn't have to. You have to forgive yourself though, too, mostly. If you don't, if you don't forgive yourself, it's harder to forgive others. If you don't forgive yourself, you're gonna feel shame and then that's straight to a path of not valuing your life, which opens the door to feeling possibly suicidal. So you have to forgive yourself. You deserve to forgive yourself. None of us are perfect. We all have our failures, our addictions, our fears, our setbacks, chronic procrastination, reclusiveness, self-loathing, and we're all gonna die one day. We're all gonna die one day. We're all gonna decompose one day. So even though we die alone, we all, it kinda, I mean, time's an illusion, so actually we all die together. So, there's comfort in um, knowing we are all equally struggling, even if it does, well, no, I can't say equally struggling, that's not fair to say at all. We are all struggling and we need to remember that. And yeah, happy new year, everybody. 2022, Caitlin Nicole Davis, her abuser is still in Abby and AJ's life. All right. Good night, everybody.